Let's see him. God, they're so awesome, man. Oh, he's not happy. So this is an actual baby that you produced. Look at this, guys. This is amazing. There's a really cool iguana here. This thing is insane. What is the scaleness? What is it? You find all of these mutants, man. What's going on? <laughs> Yo, what's going on? Ken in here. I'm hanging out with my friend Josh. Stoked to be here. Uh, what's going on? You got little lizards. We got all sorts of things going on. Today we're coming to you from Aquatics and Exotics. Uh, Josh and I have been friends for a long time, man. Meeting up at the Repticons and whatnot. Yeah. And today I was just up visiting. I'm getting some things before I head out to my uh, on my journey for my animals. Uh, and I remembered you've got some monitors that I'm interested in, so I wanted to learn a little bit more about them and hear about your successes. Uh, who do we got inside the bin? We got a male uh, Cape Man and White Throat monitor. All right. No way. Big boy. And uh, this guy's a little rambunctious, is that right? Oh, yeah. Let's see him. But God, they're so awesome, man. Uh, he's not happy. Very cool. Now, he did give you a pretty good gash earlier, so we'll go ahead and let you okay. get down. But that's an awesome lizard, man. And now, normally, these guys um, are out back. But when did you start getting into the cape monitors? I'd say about four years ago. Me and a friend, uh, we uh taken a liking to them, and he produced them before. And I ended up with a good size, uh, you know, breeding group of them. Gotcha. What's the hardest thing about keeping these guys, man? Like, what am I going to need to know? Are they similar to most other, like, Savannah-type monitors, or what's the difference in care? They are. They just need a lot more space, and um, they, uh, they're, they like to eat. So yeah. you just got to make sure you feed them. And uh, they, I get two uh, clutches a year from really? them. So they're multi, they do multi-clutches. When yeah. do those clutches come out, usually? Um, I'll have a clutch, uh, a clutch hatch in the beginning of spring, and then I'll have a, um, a clutch hatch in around November. No way! That's so cool, yeah, man. It's, it's weird. Um, so, how big do the females get? Are the males just take off? <laughs> the so males bad. are the biggers. Of the bigger of the. Uh, they are, huh? And I can show you one of the babies. Oh yeah, let's check that out too. Here's one of the. Here's what they start out like. Come on over, here, man. Here's what they start out like. Yeah, I got it. No worries. <laughs> Thanks, dude. So this is an actual baby that you produced. Yeah. Oh, he's so bummed out from being out of his enclosure. But yeah, man, he, didn't, he didn't like being taken out. Look at this, guys. This is amazing. Holy smokes. So with the babies, are you starting them off on, um, you know, insects at this point? Yeah, they're, they get started off on crickets, and they um, we try to get them onto like a uh, a ground like turkey um with vitamin mixed diet okay and um monitor chow okay that is so beautiful man i love i love the black on their snout too that's pretty amazing pretty cool so how big are the clutches usually um i produced up to a 56 egg clutch um really my average clutch is about 30 to 40. okay and what kind of hatch rates are you seeing um, I've had 100% hatch rate. Um, Get out of here. Haven't lost any. That is amazing. And do these guys, are they, do they have the typical, you know, disposition of a monitor when they're out of the egg and that after their yolks absorbed, are they just ferocious or? They're ferocious feeders and they are a little defensive, um, but it's because you're a giant and they're scared. Right. But as you can see, this one has been fed and taken care of and he's not trying to bite or. No. They're. What's really cool is they, once they really get accustomed to you, they'll start trying to scent you with their chin. They start rubbing their chin to get a scent on you. Uh, so do they have any kind of scent glands or is it just a way that they mark the, cause my Cuban iguanas will rub against me as well. And that's what I figure yeah. they're doing. Yeah, you know? that's, I suppose they do. They do have a gland under the jawline here, which is known to uh, produce a type of venom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that monitors that they've discovered that 90% of the monitors do have but uh, they um, awesome. they do rub your, the chin on you, so I'm sure there's something to do with, with that gland. Right, interesting. That is awesome, man. So these little guys are definitely a species. I visited your friend, Ron St. Pierre, yeah. uh, a few weeks ago, and definitely that was one of the target species. It's them, Lacey's, and the black Those throats. Lacey's are cool. They, they are beautiful, man. man. He's them. got an amazing uh, situation up there. Um, now, as far as these guys, what is the Latin on this? 
Abigularis, Abigularis. Okay, so this is the nominant form. Uh, you know, when you say Abigularis, and you said this is a white throat, um, what is the, it's Ionides is the black, black throat. throats, right? Yeah. But they, they, they change that stuff a lot too. Right. I don't understand why, but. It's frustrating, man. Um, they because used to there's, actually there's, sell these as Savannah monitors. Did they really? A long time ago. No yeah. way, so there's been a lot of kind of investigation as to the localities and then their uh, well, they, morphology. They get uh, clearly bigger than a Savannah. Yeah. And I have an adult Savannah I could show you. Oh, that's awesome, man. That is a cool animal. So terrestrial species, uh, more drier or what? Drier uh, they're climate? grassland species. Okay. Um, they are known to uh, hang out in the trees per se. Cool. Um, mine, if there's anything, I, I stack like, uh, um, I do bricks and um, pieces of like wood and okay. I stack it up. So and they'll go right to the top they and they'll, they'll actually climb to the top of their enclosure and just hang out and that's something else you know what that's something else that ron noticed too like he's like dude everyone says the terrestrial but his are all hanging out high on the shelf oh, yeah. it kind of makes sense if you're a grassland animal right it would behoove you especially if you're an animal that's low to the ground it might be a smart thing to do to get the best vantage point as to what prey items are out there and then what predators, predators are out there as well because exactly. i'm sure you know from hawks to lions to you know every manner of the uh, big animals out there in the African bush they're gonna take a swipe at one of these guys for sure these guys will eat snakes as well right they eat snakes they they're basically they'll eat anything that fits from eggs snakes yeah. small mammals birds I so um, rad, man. I've had them eat silver side fish really yeah that's funny it actually works as like a laxative sometimes for them a little fish oil makes yeah. things smooth yes. <laughs> very cool well, they're beautiful man I love them and uh, gosh, I don't know how many of those babies you got left, but I may need to, uh, I don't know. We may need to talk to Josh. What do you guys think? Should I get involved in some cape monitors and build a really cool enclosure for him? That would be fun to see, huh? Yeah, it would. Uh, all right, man. Well, there's another animal I want to show off here that, that caught my eye while I was hanging out. This is kind of an impromptu video, by the way. He did not expect me to show up with camera in hand. I'm kind of a pain in the neck. There's a really cool iguana here, and I want to hear this animal's story because this thing is insane, bro. Like, look at this guy. You guys are going to dig this. Check it out. Is that the Savannah? Cool. Well, I got to stay focused. There's a Savannah monitor over there, and then there's this bizarre... What is this, scaleless? What is it? No, it has small scales. Um, this animal was caught here in Florida. Shut the front door. This thing was really caught in the wild in Florida. In the wild. Where about? Um, I'm thinking in the uh, Hollywood area. Okay, down in Lauderdale? Yeah, Lauderdale. Um, it's really uh, interesting about it is it's got the features of a translucent, the features of a hypo, and it's an albino. But it's also like it's tailless. If you can't really tell on the camera, but it's snow white. That's berserk i mean this is one of the most beautiful iguanas i've ever seen man and that is caught wild so you got and oh careful <laughs> don't lose that tail man right. <laughs> that would be a tragedy and it'd be my fault because i made you pull him out um but you know it's such a small animal you haven't had it for long no i haven't I only had him about a week oh my gosh only a week and uh so that means had you not come along that thing would have probably been food for something pretty quick oh yeah that does I not blend. I personally didn't catch them, but I did acquire them. Well, good for you, man. Pretty Congratulations. Cool, huh? How about that, guys? I'm curious to see what he looks like as an adult. Yeah, you're going to keep this guy for a while, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, gosh. Even with the uh, the new laws, I mean, you can get yourself the permits and everything you need to do. Yeah. Uh, but it's, This you know, is more of a going to be along the lines of a pet. And gotcha. I am uh, grandfathered in. Yep on my permits so. that is incredible man very cool well before we leave why don't i show off this savannah monitor so you guys can see the similarities but when you really look you will see some differences between the uh the size, what? This is, yeah this is just about full grown okay um that is awesome and the coloration is much different yeah i much, mean so much different no banding uh they're they're, they're spotted this is a male um, we acquired him, unfortunately, a very good customer and friend of ours uh, had to move and was, you know, told that that lizard's not allowed to be in the house. Oh, no way. By the landlord. So oh, that's we a take him in. I'm going to give him a good life here. I'm going to build a nice pin for him out back and maybe yeah. give him a couple girlfriends and see if we can do it. Yeah, we're going to stop back and do some more with Josh and the crew here at Aquatics and Exotics. They're within a half hour's drive of me. And like I said, we've known each other a long time. So if you're in the Stewart area, come check these guys out. They've got a lot of amazing animals uh, and they're very knowledgeable and they know what you need to take care of yours. So 
just throwing it out there guys if you're down and around in south florida check these guys out and maybe you'll see what's this guy's name beast boy yeah beast boy all right let's do this we got one more special animal before we leave here today i think you guys will dig this this, this is like the video that will not end which is good i think you guys dig it no way <laughs> wait what's their names fred and george fred and george uh there seems to be something going on with fred and george so what's the story with this guy so a friend of mine named Victoria found uh, Fred and George. Found. Found them. You find all of these mutants, man. What's going on? <laughs> well, Victoria found them. Okay, okay. She, she, uh, she, she brought them to me, and the agreement of me keeping him was to keep the name. And uh, so I did. And he's doing great, Victoria, if you're seeing the video. Yep. Well, that's one of the things that, I, that you guys need to know, is that usually two-headed turtles do not last long, and this animal is clearly a couple years old. From what I understand from speaking to quite a bit of people that have had these guys is that the spine, if it's more of like an appendage, it'll survive. If it splits perfectly, that's when that one will become deceased and it will get uh, toxic. Okay, so it goes into like septic, septic. Yeah. So but if you look, let's look at that carapace. You can see guys that there's obviously the deformity or the mutation is not just the two heads, but yeah. internally also that animal sharing a spine. Uh, which is, you know, incredible, but this guy seems to be doing fine, huh? He's doing great. He's actually five years old. So no it's way. a slower growth rate uh, okay. that we have uh, seen, but both, both, if anybody wants to know, both mouths uh, do consume, they do eat, and uh, he's just been hanging out doing good. That is wild. So that's a Siamese twin, right? He is. And one head is slightly larger than the other. That is so bizarre. Check it out. All right, listen, next time you guys get down to South Florida, come meet. What's his name again? Fred and George. Fred and George, sorry. Mr. Beast Man, is that his Beast, Beast Boy. Beast Boy. I'm, <laughs> I'm losing it, people. Early onset dementia. I can't remember things that have been set in 30 seconds prior. Come check these guys out. Tell them Cam Kennan sent you. Hope you guys enjoy the video. We'll have more soon. Take care, guys.